my first meeting with, with Stan, I wasn't exposed to John Carter until that. And you walk into this room and it's, it's literally floor to ceiling of preparation. Not only just the visuals that we just saw now, but just more importantly to me was, was the character of John Carter, the arc he goes to the emotional toll and, and, and whatnot. But, and then you leave completely inspired by that energy that he has from, from you know, from since he was eight. But, and you enveloped yourself with the books, but more importantly, when you get that script, it, it, it's your Bible. And, um, you know, it, it, it's a testament to stance in the sense of just the, how collaborative we were together as well in shaping Carter. And um, it's, an, it's a very empowering thing when you get a director with a vision like this, where he wants to know, you know, he wants your take on it. Let them be crushed. Obviously, you can't relate to being on a, on Mars or dealing with these, you know, the Tharks to the Matai and, and whatnot. But it, it's it's that the Civil War and the family and the honor of what is truly grounding with with who John is, and that's something I I definitely held on to throughout the whole thing. When I saw you, I believed that something new can come into this world. It's a two part thing. That's okay. <laughs> oh no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, the first question is regarding the name of the film. I know it was changed from John Carter of Mars to just John Carter, uh, the reason for that. And also a question for Taylor. Uh, how was it from going to a much more smaller production like Friday Night Lights to a much more bigger scale like John Carter? I can answer the John Carter a bit. Um, John Carter of Mars, it's, it's truly an origin story. And when you see the, the film in its entirety, uh, you'll really understand why it was that way. Uh, Story-wise, he earns that title, which is something I am a huge fan of, especially with that, I'd say, the last couple of minutes. It's pretty great. Uh, yeah, oh, the second part was what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I just act harder. The bigger the budget, <laughs> the more I, yeah. No, I mean, look, I've done four million dollar independence uh, to these and to others that are coming up, and uh, you know, I think that the most, uh, the biggest, important thing that I draw is the director, the script, and the character I can kind of envelop myself with. So um, it's no different. A new power threatens to destroy our city. That don't look like a fair fight. I think the beauty of this gig is everyone's going to have their own perception of it. And, uh, you know, if I read the books now to what Stance was reading at eight years old, I'm going to have it, you know, in my head to his, it's different. So I love that. I think the whole point of it is to making it your own. And uh, the second you start trying to emulate something, you have no base. So the most important thing for any film or any character is to have that true base. And if I'm going to steal or kind of copy someone else, I got nothing. So. You are ugly, but you are beautiful. You will fight for us! I imagine there was never a point where you had a question about John Carter that he didn't have the answer to. So. Oh, believe it, I came up with some good stuff. <laughs> uh, little story, too, is obviously I can jump. And so, um, and, you know, with, it was, you know, there, he'd be like, okay, there's me and Tars and, and Hayden Church in a scene, especially at the Thark encampment. And there's like, oh, yeah, there's about 500 maybe more other Tharks around. And I'm like, okay, so you ask these questions of what, you know, the surrounding. And I'm like, Stance, why wouldn't I just jump out of here? <laughs> like, why would, and his answer, his answer, he'd give it a minute and he'd be like, Tharks with guns, man. There's always gonna be, so any time you think you can jump away, there's Tharks with guns right there, wait. You may be the only one who can save us. I don't know. I don't think I've had that feeling of, yeah, I've done it. I think it's uh, this, the job uh, is an incredibly grounding gig. So um, I don't know. It's an honor to play and breathe life into a guy that he, he idolized growing up. And, and I think at the end of the day, when, when you can get a, a stand thanking you for, for the sacrifice and what you've given to the film, and uh, that's probably the, the, the best part of, of this whole experience for me. When I saw you, I believed it was a sign that something new can come into this world. This one's for Taylor. 
And what preparation did you do to get into the character? None. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I interrupted. Was that the... Okay. <laughs> um, well, the body CG, which was great, because I could just eat anything I wanted. <laughs> um, no, it was, uh, I mean, a really excessively boring diet, uh, a regimen of, of around 11 months, uh, four and then seven while shooting, um, and then the same kind of regiment with um, training. And then uh, I, I said it before, I really just tried to connect to the Civil War. Sat down with a bunch of historians and, and professors at uh, University of Texas and studied the Civil War. And they gave me uh, hundreds of letters of, of um, Civil War you know, veterans and, and guys that have, were writing home. And I, I learned an incredible amount through that. And you, ch you take what you can from those things and apply it when you can. Um, but yeah, that was probably the biggest base I had to draw from was the honor and the sacrifice that he did and the guilt that he carried for leaving his family for, you know, trying to protect them. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thanks very much indeed. That's all the time we have, I'm afraid. Um, thanks for your question. Thanks for coming. Uh, John Carter's out March 9th. And please give it up for Suro, Eamon Butler, and Terry. <laughs>